Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families and society. Welcome to another edition of Put a Word on It, brought to you by Sage Spring Wealth Partners. We thank them so much for all of their contribution through the years. Uh, you know, mentors are so important to our program here. I want you to meet Ron Sorbo. You look at him and say, what can he do to connect to prison ministry? Tell you what's unusual about this man, and that's what I love about him. He loves sounds. He loves unusual sounds, and it led to this ministry. Has music always been a part of your life? Yeah. Yep, all the time. From when? Little kid? Uh, little kid. Uh, yeah, my dad played the violin uh, in an amateur manner. He wasn't a professional. My mother played guitar and drums as a kid. They sang in church, so I've been around music all the time. Mother and drums? Yep. You yeah. told me that percussion is kind of your yes, thing then, too. Yeah. They, my parents made me take the piano for many years, and I hated every minute of Why? it. Why? Uh, because it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I didn't know until I went to college all the good that it was doing me. And I can sit down and play the piano now, and you'd think that I'm a piano player. I, I'm not really, but it, it, it did a lot for me. But the thing, what's the thing with percussion? You like banging yeah, stuff? <laughs> yeah, yes. And uh, all the different sounds that are in the percussion world. There's a lot of things just around the house that make interesting sounds you would never think of. This little thing here, this is an abacus. This is a garbage can. This was a garbage can in my sister's house, and it sounds wonderful. This is a steel drum, steel pan, and it's the bottom of an oil barrel. It's a 55 gallon drum oil barrel. You know what, you make me think of one of my, my favorite composers, Hans Zimmer. Oh, yeah. And the things that he does with the craziest tubes and stuff sure. just to get sounds. People exactly. don't realize all that's available. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So I hear all this music and this intellectual look, and yet you grow up in Pittsburgh and you're a Steelers fan. Sure. Oh, You've yeah. had an interesting life. Oh, very, very wonderful. I, I was fortunately born to... to uh, two great parents. I mean, that, that was a, an advantage, so to speak. Um, family life was wonderful. There was sports, there was Jesus, there was music. Um, it, it was all that going on. Um, so yeah, it was a very interesting life. So can I assume you were a good kid? Or was there any mischief um, in your life? Yeah, I, I was pretty square, pretty... Um, no, I wasn't that adventurous, no. So yeah, I, I, it was pretty sheltered life and, and it was fine uh, it wasn't like i had all these desires that were squelched no it was um just kind of do what i saw modeled in my parents and the people that i was around so no there wasn't a lot of playing around where did your career carry you with the music uh we we moved to nashville right after my wife and i got married 41 years ago we moved to nashville impulse move uh no we had prayed about it thought about it for eight or 10 months. When we got married, it was going to be uh, here in New York or Los Angeles. Uh, this was the most sane place to live. Um, we could get home to Pittsburgh in a day's drive if we needed to. Uh, cost of living certainly played into it. But I mean, we didn't hear, go to Nashville, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. But it would seem like uh, the right thing to do, raise a family and all that. So we came to Nashville a long time ago and still here. Did music bring you here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Certainly. Okay. But you didn't bring a guitar? Nope. Nope. Didn't know anybody, really. Isn't that interesting? Man yeah. plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. Was Absolutely. there a reason you were supposed to come here? Um, I don't know a reason. Uh, my wife and I have been involved in many different kind of ministries, volunteer things. I've been in the music world. She's a nurse. This was a good place to contribute. Um you can get involved and try to help other people. You can pursue your career. Um, it's, it, it's been a very good thing. So a particular 
purpose? No, this was a good place to use the giftings that the Lord has given us. So obviously faith has been a part of your life Absolutely. all your life? Or? All my, yeah, I was, uh, I was saved by a dummy, so to speak. Uh -oh. I, I was eight years old, and my parents took us to a youth convention, and they had a little kids thing over in another uh, room, and a guy did the gospel presentation uh, with a ventriloquist uh, dummy, so to speak. And he made uh, the gospel presentation. And I remember saying to my sister, I'm going to go up. So I did and um, gave my heart to the Lord when I was eight years old. Remember it like it happened yesterday. Um, so, yeah, I was uh, saved by a dummy, so to speak. And uh, it, it was great. And, and part of the volunteer stuff that Carol and I have done at our church uh, that we've been involved with many years, I, I got a, a ventriloquist doll many years ago and did some of that myself for a while. Uh, that was kind of like coming full circle. How in the world do you then get involved in a prison ministry, Men of Valor? Um, at church, one of the guys knew about this. Um, I was uh, in the deacon ministry at church and doing a lot of work with people. And, all, and uh, this friend of mine said, hey, uh, you ought to check this out. You might be good at this. I think I had already visited maybe someone at CCA a few times um, but somebody said, hey, at this ministry, you might you might like this. And it's not far from home. I don't live very far away from here. Um, so I called up Tevin and said, hey, tell me about this. Um, yeah, just getting involved in helping other people. Um, it, to whom much is given, much is required. You know, I feel fortunate how my life has been and a chance to help other people um, was, was a great thing. A and it seemed off the wall. I mean, there's all kinds of things in my life. If you just look at this, okay, but then you look at this, and then you look at this, what, what's the connection? I mean, it's random, seemingly kind of things. But the Lord gives people gifts that are different, and just a chance to use your gifts. Did you have any concern? How in the world do I relate to guys that have been through these hard lives, and they're convicted, and, and here I come in with music? Um, at, music hasn't really been a part of any of the um, my connections and D group and mentoring. I mean, guys know my life is different in growing up than a lot of other people's lives. That doesn't matter. We're all sinners saved by grace. I listen to whatever they're saying. I don't judge them. We just talk about whatever they want to talk about. I'm just trying to be an example um, of something they might not have had before uh, to help us. I think that's a wonderful statement for men that might be thinking about being mentors. I'm not sure I'm good enough. I'm not sure I can relate. I think that's a wonderful piece that you've just said. Sure. Yeah. Um, too many guys are sitting at home not doing anything, and, and they ought to be doing something. Um, something for somebody else. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Think about other people. Put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Don't be selfish. Um, so I, I guess I learned that from my parents. They were involved in a lot of different things, um, helping people and all. I love this statement. Don't be selfish. Well, you know, the name of the program is put a word on it. Yeah. Have you got a word for me? Um, it's not a terribly holy Jesus -y kind of word. Um, persistence, uh, Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. Being persistent at following the Lord is, uh, I think, very, very important. All of us want to give up anything at, at, at some point. Somebody told me once a champion is really somebody who never quit when they wanted to. Everybody wants to quit at some time. And serving the Lord, there's going to be rough times, no doubt. But persistence, patience in affliction and faithful in prayer, it's persist, persistence has been a good thing. And you can apply that in many different disciplines of your life, whatever it is, your, your talent, your job, you want to exercise, you want to learn a new language, you want to fill in the blank. It's going to be easy to give up. Persistence is a good thing. That's so that's a, my word. That's a wonderful word. Yeah. What a joy. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Certainly. Keep up the good work. I will certainly do that. I sure enjoyed talking to Ron. I hope you enjoyed it too. You have to. He's such an interesting and gentle man, but 
the goatee. I may have to work on that part. But persistent, that's a wonderful word. You know why he was saying that? I'm thinking to myself, if you're persistent and persistent, it leads to consistency, which I found in our prison ministry is just the key to the men. They want to see if you are consistent in how your life is led and what you do and what you say. But the only way you get there is through being persistent. Loved it. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time as we put a word on it.